my assignment was to cover track and field. So my wife Margaret and I were going to go up in the Alps someplace and have a beautiful lunch. I called the room and Margaret, his wife, answered. And I said, well, I got, we, we got to have McKay in right now. Where is he? She said, he's down in the pool taking a swim. The phone rang and he said, Jim, terrorists have broken into the Israeli team headquarters. So uh, he got in very quickly and, and the rest is history. Good afternoon, I'm Jim McKay speaking to you live at this moment from ABC headquarters just outside the Olympic Village in Munich, West Germany. The peace of what is what have been called the Serene Olympics was shattered just before dawn this morning about five o'clock when Arab terrorists armed with submachine guns, faces blackened, a couple of them disguised as guards or as uh, trash men in the Olympic Village, climbed the fence, went to the headquarters of the Israeli team and immediately killed one man, Moshe Weinberg, a coach, two shots in the head, one in the stomach. As much of the world watched and listened, McKay drew deep on his repertorial background. I asked Roan, why did you pick me to, to be the anchor of our coverage on the day of the tragedy in Munich? Uh, because actually, my good friend Chris Schenkel was our host of our three-hour nightly show. But with all due respect to Chris, I just thought that this was going to require the same skills that had made Jim what he was on Wide World of Sports. And you didn't know what might happen, but you knew that it was going to be a dramatic human story with journalistic elements to it. This is building number 31. And we're moving in now on the windows behind which, at this moment, eight or nine terrified living human beings are being held prisoner. For a nation that would not know cable television and 24-hour news coverage for more than a decade, McKay became the central voice of the crisis. Hour by hour, minute by minute, the man who'd been best known for colorful offbeat sports related the details of the kidnapping. We are told that there are men with guns beginning to train those guns on the rooms where the two heads were sticking out a moment ago of the Arab guerrilla lookouts. Now, I don't... I'm not sure these men have guns or, or cameras. That, that's a gun, all right. One man with binoculars, another with a gun. Whether they have a line of fire, whether they'll have to sneak up to the corner. This is happening now, if you can possibly believe that, at the games of the 20th Olympiad. The German snipers eventually retreated, and the scene moved to a rarely used airstrip outside Munich. In the early hours of the morning local time, McKay was still on the air when the fateful rescue attempt was launched. The latest word we get from the airport is that, quote, all hell is broken loose out there, that there is still shooting going on, that there, re there is a report of a burning helicopter. I do get emotionally attached uh, to the things that I feel. My problem was not to let that much out, but to hold the rest of it back in, because I was supposed to be a, you know, a professional. And the worst words I ever heard in my ear when Kozoti said, Jim, we've fin finally gotten clearance to put it on the air. It's really true. You know, when I was a kid, my father used to say, our greatest hopes and our worst fears are mm -hmm. seldom realized. Our worst fears have been realized tonight. They've now said that there were 11 hostages. Two were killed in their rooms this mo yesterday morning. Nine were killed at the airport tonight. They're all gone. <laughs> 